When they say we need to uplift black voices, when they say we need to support black businesses, when they say we should support black creators, what do they really mean? Because it's funny how quickly all that goes out the window when a black man makes something of himself that some people don't agree with. Then their true colors show. Then it becomes clear what those people are really about. So Eric July, aka Young Ripper, made his own comic book company called The Ripperverse and will soon be releasing his first comic for his first character called Isom. He raised the money over the years to make this a reality. Pre-order sales have surpassed 1 million. This story has been covered by YouTube channels and news outlets and has also caused rumblings on social media. And to no one's surprise, there's been a lot of hurt feelings over this black man's success. You see, Eric July is a libertarian who lives in Texas and says things that make liberals mad. He's not a black man that they can control. And when liberals can't control minorities, then you'll see how quickly they'll call them all sorts of names and drag their names in the mud. Now upon the positive response to Isom and the Ripperverse, there's been people dumbfounded on how this is possible and why it's such a big deal because there's other black creators out there. Well, here's why. Eric July has stated that he and his company will not cram politics into their comics and will respect the customer. They don't want to make the same mistakes that companies such as Marvel and DC have. They want to be a good alternative that consumers can trust. This has nothing to do with his race. Unlike other creators that are obsessed with race and politics, Eric July is not one of them. That, to many people, is refreshing because so many forms of entertainment has been fucking up characters and stories because these companies want to hire activists majoring in gender studies that can care less about the source material and would rather cram their views into established properties. People are fed up with beloved characters being tarnished by the major companies. Now they see an alternative that they can trust. And that's why Eric July is getting so much support. And as a fan of his content, I wish him more success and I hope this helps open the doorway for other creators that want to be that alternative. However, I need to be a little critical and honest about my thoughts on how I feel about the Ripperverse. First off, I think the Ripperverse name sounds stupid. The logo of a hat with thunderbolts coming off the sides looks goofy. And while the art for the Isom comics looks really good and has professional levels of quality, I think the designs themselves are lacking, especially with Isom himself, for example. He looks like a background character in the X-Men comics that Magneto or some other villain would wipe out along 50 other no-name mutants. Overall, the designs just seem very basic and don't give off a clear idea of what the characters are about or what their powers are or skills are. Overall, just very bland in my opinion. And lastly, when Eric July mentions the growth of Isom being organic, that is a false statement. A ton of his support is from people that know him from his years on YouTube. He has a large channel and has collaborated with other large channels such as Geeks and Gamers and Nerdrotic. Eric July is not some random guy who just put out a trailer for his comic and a website to pre-order his books and just got people on board. There's literally comments of people saying they are buying the comic because of him. People saying they are not comic fans but will buy his comics because of what he stands for socially and politically, so no, it is not organic. To add to this, my friend Jen Pachi, who you can find on YouTube, I'll leave a link in the description below, 
He's a fan of Eric July. He's also an artist himself. And he's a huge comic book fan as well. So he's more knowledgeable on this field than I am. So take it away, Jim Pachi. Thanks for having me, Revenant. And for the record, I want to say what Eric July is doing is great. Creating an alternative and proving creators can be successful despite the big two Marvel and DC having so much mainstream influence. And that if companies won't give us non-agenda driven stories, we'll make them ourselves. That being said, I want the Ripperverse to succeed and do well, but I can't help but feel that while the art is beautiful and absolutely amazing, I'm not a big fan of the designs. They just seem bland in my opinion. A character should visually give off what they're about to some degree, what their powers may be, etc. But when I look at Isom, for example, he just, comes, he just comes across as basic in design. I can't tell much about who he is. When we look at Batman, Iron Man, the Hulk, Spawn, etc., we can see what they may be like off their look alone. Isom reminds me of an X-Men side character, mainly due to the color scheme, or like he's wearing one of the generic superhero suits in Saints Row 3. I just wish it had more personality, and stood out more. Yairo also looks pretty standard as well for similar reasons, and her powers come across as generic energy-based attacks. It's hard to say anything that stands out. Again, all respect and congrats to Eric July. What he managed to accomplish is nothing short of incredible. But being honest, if I saw the cover of the book and saw Isom in a comic shop or online store, I wouldn't look twice at it. And again, the artwork itself is amazing, and I'm sure the writing will hold up, but the design of the characters just lack any iconography in my opinion. Anyway, much respect to Eric July. I'm a big fan of his channel. Just giving my honest opinions, we can all be great and we can be the alternative. That being said, check out my channel. I upload a lot of gameplay and plan on bringing to life some of my own creations soon. Thanks for having me on Revenant, back to you. This is in no way meant to shit on Eric July. Again, I applaud what he's been able to do. It's not easy, but he made a goal for himself and made it happen. And once again, I wish him success. But there's legit criticism and feedback that is not meant to simply hate on the man. However, there's definitely a lot of crabs in a barrel with a lot of salt. It's crazy how a bunch of pro-blacks and white liberals love to preach about helping black people and letting them shine. But once it's a black person that thinks for themselves and doesn't play the victim, they act the fool. They show how racist and hateful they truly are. The success of the Ripperverse can lead to great things, not just for Eric July, but for others as well. There's many great creators out there that want to be an alternative, just like the Ripperverse. While the money and backing may not be there, the passion is very much so present. Be that alternative, be creative, and believe in yourself, even if no one around you does. Bet on yourself. Prove the doubters wrong. Show the big companies how it's done. Give consumers hope again. And if you lack the creative skills, don't be afraid to shed light on those who need support. We can all do our part. In a time where beloved creations are being soiled, we need people more than ever to bring passion and respect back to the things we love. Comics, books, games, movies, and TV. They all need some new life. And we have so many incredible people who are chomping at the bit to bring life back into entertainment. Now it's our turn to show them what we can do. You can choose to be a puppet or you can choose to be great.